Backstage at the Murat Theater in Indianapolis, doctors Jane Fortune and Robert Hess gather with some of the world's top ballet dancers at a gala performance of Evening with the Stars. It's an annual event of the Indianapolis City Ballet, which was created in 2008 as a gift to the city. This is just one of the most recent chapters involving two rich lives that intersected 23 years ago. It began when Bob was asked by the president of the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts to consult with a committee that Jane was co-chairing. He sat me at a table of nine women, and I only saw one. Uh, we started talking, and uh, we've been together ever since. You know, we hold hands. If she ever lets go, it's over. <laughs> <laughs> so let's hold hands. <laughs> Jane Fortune's roots in Indiana run deep. Her great-grandfather, William Fortune, was a visionary civic leader whose work is commemorated in the Indiana Historical Society's Destination Indiana Gallery. His work to improve the city of Indianapolis set a standard for civic engagement and philanthropy that has been passed on to subsequent generations. We were very fortunate, uh, and uh, my father told our, me and my siblings that uh, because we were so fortunate that we always had to give back to those people who were less fortunate. And that's how we've grown up. Jane was the oldest of four children growing up in a prominent Indianapolis family. A love of art came early. Not long after high school, Jane discovered one of her first great passions, the city of Florence, Italy. When I got off the train in Santa Maria Novella Station when I was 18 years old, I knew I'd come home. Florence grabbed my heart and it's never let go. It wasn't until she first met Bob that Jane's passion for Florence and art intersected and became a full-blooded life's calling. It began with the discovery of an old book at an antique book show about Sister Plotilla Nelli, the first known woman painter of Florence. I read the book and I asked all my friends, do you know this woman? No one knew her, no one knew this woman. Well, if they don't know her, how many other women artists don't they know in Florence? And that started the quest. It culminated in the book Invisible Women, but we found 136 works of art by women on the walls and 2,000 works of art by women that are in the storages that have not been seen for centuries. Jane and Bob have built relationships and credibility in Florence as she continues to champion and restore the work of women artists. In the process, she and Bob co-founded the Advancing Women Artists Foundation, as well as the Jane Fortune Research Program at the Medici Archive Project. We've done 20 works now, we've restored 20 works, and every time I get a piece of art on the wall, I feel like, oh good, I really, it's another thing I can do to help these people. Bob had a long career before meeting Jane. He grew up as an only child in New York. His early passion was music. He played as a professional violinist, performing with the Erie Philharmonic, as well as the Seventh Army Symphony Orchestra. Bob's diverse career spanned higher education, the arts, and international aid and affairs, as he served as a college president, president of Chautauqua Institution, and head of development in America for UNICEF. Through these jobs, Bob worked with some of the most notable figures in politics and entertainment. Bob also became executive director of the Joffrey Ballet. It was that experience that influenced his strategy for launching the Indianapolis City Ballet. Bob said he first resisted an inquiry about starting a new company following the bankruptcy of Ballet International. I said, absolutely not. No, I won't do that. A couple of weeks later, we talked about it and went back and I said, ah, if you want to do something national and international in scope, I'd be willing to try. The Indianapolis City Ballet is now preparing for its sixth Evening with the Stars Gala and has brought in top dancers and choreographers for master classes. There's so much more that they do that they don't even advertise, that we never even know about. There's kids that they're underwriting educations that we've never even heard about. So there's just a lot going on that they're constantly, constantly moving forward. It's amazing to be around them. We're very fortunate to have them in the community, and they're not into it for the publicity. They're into it for just the betterment of mankind. It sounds corny, but it's true. At a time when others are comfortable with retirement, Jane and Bob remain busy writing new chapters in their own lives. 
Jane wrote her first book at age 65. She's written several more since. In the middle of writing Invisible Women, she was diagnosed with stage three breast cancer. In many ways, work on that book was some of her strongest medicine. At that point, I, I, had, I had to fight for my life. It was not a matter of being able to do much of anything. But the fact that I had the book, you know, that was kind of the, the impetus to keep me going. The book was published, and it, the message was, you can live through anything, and look what happens. The adaptation of Invisible Women into a documentary for public television has led to one of Jane's proudest possessions, an Emmy for the production. I think it's the greatest thing, <laughs> just, the great, just I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it, so. It does give me a lot of, a lot of uh, strength and uh, courage to go on and do other things that maybe I would have been a little bit more hesitant to do. One of the things that's a treat about Jane is that it, she is truly a person who never imagined something like this 40 years ago. I mean, I, that's one of the reasons it was so wonderful to recognize her with an honorary doctorate. Jane's commitment to art as both a scholar and philanthropist has led her to serve on boards for the Indiana University Art Museum, the Indianapolis Museum of Art, and the Heron School of Art and Design. She also sponsors a lecture series at Heron, bringing world-class women artists to campus. Jane and her siblings also contributed the Statue of Job to the school. Here is a piece that stands on the front steps of Heron, one of the great art schools there is in this country. And you see that looking out, and that's a great image, and it's a great image that was made possible uh, by generosity uh, that they had. Don't look for signs of a slowdown. Jane has a new book and a new documentary in the works and continues serving as cultural editor of the Florentine. Other art restorations are underway and Jane continues her quest to find a permanent museum space to showcase women artists. The ballet company continues to pursue new and expanded programming. And if that's not enough, Jane and Bob are in the third season of operating an authentic Tuscan restaurant, vineyard, and wine label in their summer home of Leland, Michigan. Both are aptly named Bella Fortuna, Beautiful Fortune. Our kids keep saying, why don't you just stop and smell the roses? This is ridiculous. You know, but no, they know, <laughs> they know, nope, we're not gonna do that. I have seen them go all day and all night in pursuit of the, their various creative enterprises. They, they truly are amazing, but they're fueled by the passion for what they do. They came together and they have shared their enormous talent to make here better. And in doing so, they've touched other parts of the world and made them better as well. At a recent screening of the Indianapolis City Ballet's latest documentary project, Bob spoke passionately about the quest for excellence. In order to be great, you have to think big and you have to follow through. And we do that. We are, I thought about it, we are from Indianapolis, but we are of the world. And so Jane and Bob confidently take the stage, presenting and preserving great art in many forms, inspiring and supporting new generations of artists, and demonstrating that inspiration and passion know no age. We are honored and humbled to be one of Indiana's living legends, and we're just glad that we're here, that we're living. <laughs>